commend my colleague Stuart Nash on the great speech that he gave. Um, it, it looked particularly excellent considering he followed on from John Carter. Now we had to listen, before Mr Nash spoke, we had to listen to Mr Carter spend seven of his ten minutes um, tell us a story about the price of beer. Um, and I just want to say that that indicates to this side of the House that that's how far removed the national government is from reality. Because the reality is that most everyday New Zealanders are actually more concerned about the price of bread and being able to put that on the table than they are about the price of a case or a keg of beer, Mr Carter. But thank you very much for that seven minutes of your speech. Um, I'm sure, even though we go away not being any the wiser, um, that, um, that that was satisfying for you to give. Now, um, Mr Speaker, so many people are saying now, so many people are saying, they were, they were thinking, OK, there's never been a one-term national government. Labor, you'd have a really hard job at, at making this a one-term national government. And so many people, after the announcement of the budget, are now saying, you, you know what, Labor, we think you can actually win this. We think that Labor can actually win the next election. And why? Because of the fact that they have shown their true colours with regards to where their priorities lay, their lack of empathy for the ordinary Kiwi family, the lack of understanding for, for New Zealanders that are struggling, and their priorities being those that already earn large sums of money. So thank you, National Government. Thank you for showing New Zealanders what you are all about. Thank you very much. Now, Mr Speaker, the other day I um, was listening to the Pacific radio station and I heard um, a caller who was being interviewed um, talk about the fact that his mother earns $32,000 a year. And he just thought, and I thought it was interesting, that it was so unfair to think that here's his mother who has worked as a cleaner at Middlemore Hospital, my sister also works there, um, doing the same job, um, working her butt off and then she will come away none the better with this budget. Now they have put out statements, the Minister of Pacific Island Affairs has put out statements saying the Pacific Island community is going to be so much better off um, with these tax cuts. But the reality is that once you take into consideration um, the rises in ACC, the anticipated rise in inflation, the um, increase in GST, um, the average worker the person on the minimum wage is actually going to be much worse off. And what I think was interesting with regards to that caller when he spoke about his mother is that he also pointed out the fact that he had watched the Prime Minister give his speech after the budget had been announced and that he felt insulted by the fact that the Prime Minister thought it was one big joke. Here he was talking about the budget. He just put a nail in the coffin to those that are struggling out there and said, got up and just did one big um, comedian routine. And I thought, you know what, that is exactly what we were thinking. How can we take a Prime Minister seriously who can't even take the struggles of Kiwi seriously and rather than speak to the issues and rather than express any level of compassion, he stands up and just spends 10 minutes, 10 minutes cracking jokes and and, and attacking the Leader of the Opposition. The Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Bill Goff, who had just expressed the sentiments of many Kiwis, the sentiment being, how are we going to cope? How are we going to cope, given that this government has done absolutely nothing to, um, to create opportunities for jobs? How are we going to cope, given that this government has just increased GST and it's going to be more expensive to live? How are we going to cope when our Prime Minister thinks that's a joke, can't take anything seriously, um, is, is sitting there happy as Larry because of the fact that he's the $50 million, $50 million man and he's just gifted all his mates an um, incredible tax cut. Now, I think that's offensive and I think it was right for that person that rang into the radio to state that it was insulting. It is insulting. That whole everyone that sits in those National Party seats, the ACT Party seats, and also to some extent, I have to say, and I wish I didn't have to say it, the Māori Party seats, it is offensive on behalf, behalf of most of the Kiwis out there. Now, Mr Speaker, we've looked at um, the amount of money that has been, has been given with regards to tax cuts, and, and, and I had it pointed out by my colleagues, including Stuart Nash, that it is a broken promise. 
Now, we heard from the Prime Minister before the election there would be no increase in GST, but unfortunately it follows on from many of the broken promises that we've experienced over the last 18 months. It is another broken promise. And what's, what's worrying is that it's also at the, at the expense of other services that are necessary um, if we're going to move this country forward. Now, as a Pacific person, as a person with, um, with a role in our um, education caucus, um, I, 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 do, I am concerned over the fact that here we are, tax cuts for the rich. And then at the same time, we have $400 million cut from early childhood education. Now, the Labor government for nine years did take education overall seriously, did take early childhood education seriously. They knew that with a young demographic, in order to, to curb the inequality that exists, that it is really important that all of our children get the same start with regards to education. There were increases, despite what the other side of the House has to say, in the numbers of Māori and Pacific undertaking early childhood education. There were increases in the number of Māori and Pacific educated, quali qualified staff in early childhood education. And that came out of, that came out of a concerted effort to make that happen. Now that wasn't, that wasn't um, out of a sense of charity towards the Māori and Pacific community, um, charity that we often hear the um, National Party talk about but never ever demonstrate. It was out of an understanding that not only would it be good for those communities but it would be also be good for New Zealand as a whole. And yet that, that government, the National Government, thinks that cutting $400 million from early childhood education is somehow um, going to be good for this country and that early childhood education is not a priority. We've also seen other cuts. We've seen cuts overall with regards to education, um, regardless of what the Minister of Education um, has said in this House. We've seen reductions, a 14.4% cut in Māori and Polynesian scholarships, 14.4%. We've seen the end of the $2.15 million school enhancement program. We've seen um, further restrictions on student loans, which will affect Māori and Pacific more than anyone else, and I know this having worked at the University of Auckland. Um, we've also seen the student loan eligibility for new permanent residents for, for, um, be actually tampered with, and this will disproportionately affect Pacific people. Now, all of these things don't make for a very bright future um, for New Zealand. And so I do think there are a lot of New Zealanders out there that are actually thinking, hang on a second, if I voted for National, I made a mistake. Someone said to me the other day, we should create a bumper sticker that says, don't blame us, we voted Labor. And I actually think that would be a really good idea. A lot of, a lot of New Zealanders are quite embarrassed, those that did, who voted for National for the first time because of the fact that now they see actually these people haven't changed their colours. We forgot what they were like, but actually no, they, they're exactly the same as what they were before. Now, Mr Speaker, the main message that we have to put out there is that, yes, the national government might be saying that this was a tax switch, but the reality is this is a tax swindle. And New Zealanders have been done over by that national government. And I think that they may still be going through their honeymoon period um, with regards to the budget. But it will not last. It will not last, Mr Quinn. And, and what we will see is further, further um, dissatisfaction with what that government is able to provide, um, further anger with the fact that they have no level of compassion um, for people that are struggling out there. The leadership is flawed in that their Prime Minister thinks that everything is a big joke and would rather stand in, up in the House and, um, and go through a comedian routine than actually talk to the issues that are real for the everyday Kiwi. And the reality is it's not going to get much better. Now, we've seen some of the things that they are planning on doing in the future. New Zealanders have woken up. Um, that government has a very short term um, with regards to how much longer they will be serving this country. Thank you, Mr Speaker.